Yep, possibly. Welcome back to Trucks and Junk. Today, we will be going through what will it take to street legalize a go-kart. So you guys might be asking, well, why would I want to do that? Well, the main reason that I need to at this point is because as you guys that have been watching my channel for some time now, you guys realize that I have quite a few little toys like this um, and I'm building more and that's actually starting to cause a problem in my neighborhood. And the main reason that is, is because you guys know my son, Oscar, and my son, Oscar likes to go out and ride this thing. I mean, obviously, look at the tires. They're worn out. But now that we have more and more toys going out, you know, people are starting to bat an eye to it. And I also have other neighbors starting to buy toys as well, because that field that we ride in, it's kind of like it's, it's owned by the, the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? We all get to go out there and ride. But when my son rides it in the streets, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it starts to make some neighbors a little bit upset about it. So long story short, a neighbor had called the cops on my son while he was out riding this thing. So, you know, my son got pulled over in it. And then the officer followed my son home in the cart and we had a nice talk about it. And, you know, I asked him, so what does it take? To make these legal on the road today to where my I don't have to worry about my son getting pulled over. So he told me what steps I need to take to make this legal. So I'm going to help you guys and I'm going to make a video of what steps it takes to make this legal for your child or for you to go ride this in neighborhood streets. Now I'm not talking about making this legal to be able to go up and down the bypass or the interstate or any major road. One of the requirements is it has to go slow. So you're definitely not going to be able to put it on, on a country road or, you know, something like that. Drive it back and forth to work. This is not the video for that. This video is so your child don't get in trouble riding the go-kart in the neighborhood. I got to let you know, not all states are the same. So you'll need to check with your local law enforcement to see what all steps you need to take as well. Because some states have different rules and regulations. But I'm going to cover in this video primarily the ones that all states have if the state allows you to do this with low speed vehicles. So some states don't even allow you to do it at all. So this is the list that most states require for a low speed vehicle to make them street legal. Number one is they have to have seat belts. So that being said, mine already has seat belts. So I'm not going to be showing you on this video how to install seat belts. But like my golf cart, you guys know it don't have seat belts. And there's a lot of go-karts out there that don't have seat belts. So the only seat belt that they require is a simple lap belt. You can pick them up pretty cheap on Amazon. You just bolt them to the frame and then they can just buckle right over you. That's all it really requires is just that one simple belt. It also requires to have mirrors facing in the rear direction. It also has to have turn signals. It has to have tail lights. It has to have brake lights, headlights. And it's not allowed to be loud. So the stock muffler that comes on a Predator 212 is too loud. We'll have to get an aftermarket muffler to make it quieter or figure out a way to make that muffler quieter to be able to pass their decibel sound when they do the test. And it's not allowed to exceed 25 miles per hour at the time of test. So all you got to do on that is adjust your throttle cable to where it cannot pull the throttle lever any farther to make this 25 miles an hour. Some of them have a screw on the pedal, some of them have a screw on the engine that you can turn in and it just governors it down to where it can't go over 25 miles per hour. Because they will test that when they you take this to have it inspected for the permit. And they still require the orange flag. Even though you have all of these lights, you have to still have the flag fixed to the go-kart. So now that I've told you what they require and what we're gonna need, I'm going to go ahead and start showing you what I'm going to do to make that happen on this go-kart. So now, I'm pretty sure most of you are wondering, if they require all these lights to be on this cart and everything has to be working, what about the carts that don't have a charging system or any way of 
powering up these lights. So a good little trick for that as well. So what I've done is I went to Harbor Freight and I bought a 12 volt drill battery for their Warrior brand drills. They come with the battery and the charger for 12 bucks. Like you can't beat that. So now you have a 12 volt battery that is literally just a positive and negative. There's no third safety wire on these that'll give you 12 volts to be able to power up your lights and your horn. But now that being said, you're going to want to use all LED lights because if you use the filament style bulbs, they will go through the battery very quickly. Whereas if you use all LED stuff and your kid don't play with the horn over and over and over again, this battery will last a whole ride. And like I said, they're 12 bucks and they come with a charger. So pick you up two or three of them. That way, if you're out riding all day and one does die, you got a spare battery to take with you and plug it up. But that's a good trick to keep you from having to buy the stator and all that stuff to put in the engine just to run lights. You can run them off of this battery right here. And I'm going to show you how to hook all that up. So next up is the mirrors. He said all you have to have is two mirrors facing in the rear direction to meet the standards. So all you have to do is pick up these little spot mirrors from Walmart that you put on your, your regular car mirrors down the bottom that gives you that little extra view and literally just glue them to a piece of metal and then screw the piece of metal to the frame. And that will literally pass as a mirror facing in the rear direction. So just do two of them, one on each side. That's all you have to do for the mirrors. Then after that, you need your turn signal. So I got on Amazon and I picked up a turn signal horn kit. So it comes with the flasher to work the turn signals and it comes with the switch for the turn signals. And it comes with the turn signals themselves in the bag as little round LEDs, but I'm not gonna use these because I, 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 I've came up with a different way of doing it. I don't wanna use these ones, but it also comes with some little LED uh, projector headlights, which is pretty cool really. <laughs> and it comes with the horn that is required to run this thing. And it also comes with a horn button, but I'm not gonna use this horn button because I am going to use a standard horn button and I'm gonna put it in the steering wheel to where when they hit the steering wheel, it actually has a horn. And then I am personally going to use marker lights for my lights. So the amount that I have is I have four red, four yellow, and two white because I'm gonna make these my headlights. Cause like I said, they're not gonna be very effective anyway. They're not gonna be used a whole lot and I just think they would look better than a big bulky light there. So I just bought white marker lights, two of them, four red and four yellow. And that's all my lights that I'm going to need for this to be legal. And then I bought a toggle switch for the, be able to turn the headlights and marker lights on. And then I bought another horn button that I'm going to rig up to the brake pedal to be able to make the brake lights work. So that's the list of materials that I've got. And of course, the orange flag. So the first thing we're going to install, which is the easiest, is the flag. Okay, guys, you can pick up these flags on Amazon. I think they're like six bucks. Um, they come long for a reason because most go-karts don't have a roll cage. So they have to be able to fix it from the bottom and it's got to reach a certain height. So where mine has a roll cage, I'm going to cut mine down and just zip tie it. Zip tie it the roll cage it's literally that simple that as long as it's on the vehicle and it'll flap in the wind that's what they want so now i'm gonna cut this down to size and i'm just gonna zip tie it to the frame so to cut it i'm just using a pair of metal cutters you know it's just fiberglass it's not hard to cut it shouldn't be hard to cut and i'm just gonna touch it to the bottom of the frame that way i still know it's regulation height and then I'm just going to mark it and snip it. Now you can get these where they're bolted, they, where they can just bolt in as well. They have a little screw thing on the bottom of them to where you can just, like some of these carts have a little bracket to where you can just bolt them on. But I didn't buy that one. It costs like 10 bucks. And I'm just going to zip tie it in. Now it's probably not facing the right way anymore. Uh, 
All right. So like I said, that is the easiest install that you're going to do. at your first step in making it legal is installing that flag. So. Maybe I could stick a GoPro to it. Maybe it won't vibrate as much. It might be a useful thing for us. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe I can make something good out of it is what I'm trying to say. Next up is going to be the horn. I'm going to show you how to hook it up on the table before I put it into the go-kart. All right, for this, uh, to show you guys how it works, I'm going to use these alligator clips just for testing purposes. But when I wire it into the go-kart, it will be solid wired. So the way a horn works is you're going to want your hot to come straight from the power source, which is either the fuse box or the battery or your ignition switch, straight from it to the horn. Okay, so one of the other terminals, you're going to want to use it. So then you'll put your hot wire to it. And then your next wire will come from the battery or whatever to your horn button. And that'll be your ground. You always want to send your ground as a switch. You don't want to send the hot as a switch. Because that gives you more chances of a short if you send the hot. And then you'll go from your button with the same ground from the other side. And then it'll go to the other terminal on the horn. Okay, so once you've done that, you've got your two grounds going to your button. One coming from the battery to the horn, and then your hot coming from the battery to the horn, you should be able to push the button and have a horn. And that's how you hook up a horn. Now I'm going to go ahead and bolt all this to the go-kart, and I'm going to go ahead and run my wiring through the steering wheel so I can make that work on the go-kart. That's so what I'm doing, is I'm running one wire out of this horn switch, and I'm going to drill a hole through the steering wheel to feed it through there, and I'm leaving this screw out where it can pull the ground from the steering wheel and go through the switch. That way I don't have two wires coming up through the column. And when I ground the body, this should be grounded as well. If not, then I'll have to run a ground wire to this to make sure it's grounded. But I don't want two wires coming up and down the column. It just makes more of a mess that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bolt out of the steering wheel. And then I'll use that bolt to hold the horn button. And then this metal prong right here should be touching the steering wheel. And then I'll grind that down a little bit to where it can make good contact. I'm drilling a hole here for that one wire to go through. A big thick piece of metal there guys it's a steering column so it took a second now i'm gonna run that i'm gonna take that bolt out right there and i'm gonna run that wire through okay so now what i've done is i've drilled that hole and then i covered this side with electrical tape that way this side can't touch now and then i've wired out this hole to be able to accept the bolt for the steering wheel so i'm gonna run that wire through there now And I'm going to bolt this to the wheel. And now this side can ground out to the wheel. Okay. Now the button is grounded to the wheel. Okay, now let's try it out. We got the Battery sitting in here. I don't have the grounds hooked up yet. I'll try to hook them up now. But like I said, there's only one wire coming out of the column. We'll run it to the ground side of the horn. Which I'll put a terminal on that as well. Make it proper. And then we'll just put the ground to something on the chassis. And let's try it. That's one wire, and it's using the steering column for the ground. So, that's how you want to do it, guys. All right, and I'm going to mount the horn.
That's all I'm going to use to mount this horn is just a self tapper screw. If that'll focus for you. Nothing special, just a self tapper screw. And I'm just going to mount it facing downwards on the inside here. You won't even see it when that cover's on. But it'll be there. That's all that matters. And I'm just going to drill it straight into the frame here. And I'll just bend that just like that. And that'll be a perfect spot for it. Now that we've gotten the horn figured out, next up is going to be the wiring for the turn signals. Now the good thing is, is the kit that I bought came with a wiring instructions. So I'm gonna put this up here so you all can pause the video just in case your alls did not come with the wiring instructions. All right, so now that we've done that, we're going to be reading the instructions and hooking up the wiring for the turn signals. Okay, just like the horn, now I'm going to show you how to hook this up on the table. So, the first thing you're going to want to do, per the instructions, is your hot wire goes from the battery to the B terminal on the flasher. So, the B terminal is going to be this terminal right here, looking at the terminal from this direction. So, you'll have the third pin facing up. So, your B terminal is going to be the one on the left. So, we're going to go ahead and hook the hot wire to that terminal. And then we're not going to hook it to the battery. Then your next wire is going to be your ground. And it's going to go to your L terminal on this side of the flasher. So it's directly across from the B terminal. Okay. Now that you've got those two done, your next wire is going to be a hot wire that goes from the center terminal, which is right there. And it'll go to the center terminal on your switch. Now, this is the hot feed for your switch. Okay. So you plug that in just like that. Now, that is your hot wire for your switch. And then you'll have another ground wire that comes from the battery or comes from the chassis or comes from wherever you source your ground. Because once you ground your chassis, your chassis can become the ground for everything else. And then that will go to the terminal that's offset on the switch. And I think they call that terminal number seven. Yeah, and it's even got a seven written in there on it. So that'll be your ground for the switch. So now that we've got the hots and the grounds hooked up, we're going to go ahead and plug them into our battery. So you have your hot plugged into your battery and then your negative plugged into your battery and then we'll just source the ground from the switch from the flasher okay so now that we've got that hooked up the switch should be active so let's see if it yep see so now you got the blinking and the lights on the switch are working okay so now that you've gotten that far you now have a turn signal pulse so your next step is going to be just hooking up your lights. So let's see. So this side is going to be your left turn signal. And this side is going to be your right turn signal. So this is going to be your hot for your left turn, turn signal. Okay. That will go there on that side. Just like so. And then your ground will go back to anywhere on the chassis, like I said before. And now we should be able to turn that to the left. Well, oh, okay. Turn it to the right, and that will now light up the turn signal. And you'll put one in the front, one in the back. We will do the same thing with the other side. Looks like a fire hazard on my table. <laughs> but now you should have... We'll ground the light to that. We'll just consider that chassis ground. Okay, now we'll have left. And then we'll have right. And that's your two turn signal signals. So now if, as long as you wire it up like that, you can mount it in your rig and you'll have turn signals. All right, so what I've done is I've zip tied 
a bunch of these marker lights together. So now I have two tail lights, two brake lights, and two turn signal lights all on one bar. And then what I'm going to plan on doing is I'm going to weld a bracket down here, here, and here. So I can bolt this to the cart just like that right underneath this bar. And that way I have all of the lights that I need. But for now, I'm just going to zip tie this bar to this bar so I can get everything wired up. And then we'll weld the brackets later on. All right, so this is what I've got, guys. I've got my headlights mounted. I've got my turn signals mounted. Oscar, go ahead and turn on the headlights. Turn on the turn signals. Go to the other side. Ooh. Got that wired up. I've got the horn wired up. Go ahead and honk the horn there, Oscar. All right. The way I did my brake lights is I put a, that one of them horn switches right here on the brake pedal. Just like that. So when you hit the brakes, you push the switch. Go ahead and hit them brakes. Pull it off of it there, Oscar. Hit them. Hit them. That lights up your brakes. Let me push you forward there, Oscar. All right. Now hit the brakes. There you go. That lights up the brake light. I turn on the headlights, Oscar. That turns on the tail lights. Now turn on the turn signals, Oscar. There's your turn signals. All right. And then I've got the horn button on the steering wheel. So what I have for the battery bracket is I welded a piece of C channel here to the frame and then I just drilled a hole in it and spot welded it to the frame and that fits the battery pretty good and then I'll probably get me a rubber strap to hook from here to the other side to hold down on it so it don't come out. You can plug it in at the battery here and then I could take it out to charge it at any time. And then I've got my headlight switch here. And my turn signal switch here on the dash. It'd work out pretty good, wouldn't it, Oscar? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get the metal back on this and I'm gonna get that blue wiring loom stuff to put over the wires here and cover all that up, and make it look real good. And then we'll get these mirrors installed. So I'll see y'all in a second. So with these mirrors, I couldn't figure out a way to mount these to this without it looking completely dorky or make no sense. So I'm getting rid of that idea. And what I did is I went to the junkyard and I pulled a set of mirrors off of a wreck scooter. And I think these would look a lot better on here than just those hanging off of a stick. So what my plan is, take this, is I'm gonna drill a hole here in the frame and I'm gonna stick these down in there and then I'm gonna weld the nut to the frame. That way we can screw them on. And I think that would look a lot better than just a stick coming out here with those two spot mirrors on it. Because as much as I would like to cheap out on it, I'd kind of like my cart still looking good as well. So I think I'm just gonna do it the right way and went and got some scooter mirrors. Now you guys can buy these on Amazon or a couple other websites, eBay and stuff. So if you don't want to go to the junkyard and get used ones, you can buy these new as well. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna drill these two holes. We're gonna stick them in there and we're gonna weld them. So where it's a round pipe, I'm gonna start it with a, a divot to where the drill bit don't walk. We'll center that to the pipe. I'm just gonna punch a divot in it. That way the drill bit won't walk. I hurt my ears. question is did we drill that big enough we did so now i can weld that nut to there and then these will be adjustable all right let's do the other side let me start the pilot all right here you go
Bro, you ain't got no weight. So <laughs> <laughs> we finish it before you kill the battery on the drill. Damn, <laughs> Mister, you're strong. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> So now we have a mirror on this side. So now we've got this side on. I'm going to weld the other side. I'll see you all in a minute. All right. So at this point, now that you've got lights, turn signals, brake lights, tail lights, mirrors, uh, seat belts, horn. At this point, besides doing the exhaust to make it quieter, which some of you guys already have a quiet exhaust, so I'm not going to get into that with this video. And the other special things that other states require, like windshield or cat converter, that all depends on your guys' state. But at this point in the state that I'm in, this is good enough to go ahead and go for the inspection to get a permit to be able to drive this on the road. So now that we're at this point, I'm going to let Oscar go rip it out here in the neighborhood real quick. Just so you all can see how everything works. See you in a minute. As you guys can tell, it's pretty loud. <laughs> He's all the way down there and I can still hear him. So we're definitely got to do something with the muffler. But like I said, not on this video. How to do? What? How to do? It was fun. Were the mirrors good? Ah, I, didn't I, even I, use them, did you? Barely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's like for some reason it feels more smooth now, though. Or oh, it's just driving. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Now that you're at this step, the only thing left to do is to get a hold of your local DMV or sheriff's office or whatever to get the inspections done. Now keep in mind, like I previously stated in the beginning of the video, you'll definitely want to check with your state to see if this is even possible to be done in your state. And keep in mind, some states require insurance to make them street legal as well. So definitely check with your state before you start doing all of this because if you're not wanting to put insurance on it, there are certain states that require it, and once you've got it to this step, they're going to require you to have insurance. Thankfully, ours don't, but there are some states that do. But like I said, at this step, take it, get it inspected, and then your kids should be good to go, or you should be good to go, whichever. You know, some people have race carts and want to do it that way, but race carts ain't no fun at 25, I'm just going to say. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. And I will see you on the next one.